Greetings, everyone. My name is Vinay. So let's have a look at today's agenda. Today we'll be exploring the concepts of playbooks in Curator Soar. Then we'll learn how to create and customize playbooks, understand how to customize actions and responses in playbooks, and automating responses to security incidents using playbooks. Now we are working here with some few assumptions. We believe you possess a fundamental, fundamental grasp of IT security. You are familiar with the basic concepts of SOAR. And if you can notice, there's one more point today we have included is it's good if you can have Python knowledge because we'll be working with some of the scripts. So let's get started. Let's get ourselves introduced to playbooks. The IBM Curida Security SOAR platform provides the logic to create playbooks that meet your security orchestration, automation, and response needs. Uh, as we know, Playbook is the set of tools, conditions, business logic, flows, and tasks that are used to respond to security events and threats in a SOAR environment. Now, for the purpose of building a Playbook, a SOAR environment is defined as orchestration, automation, and response. Let's look at each of them. Orchestration. It's an environment where security tools and solutions can work together to detect, respond, and provide remediation of security events and threats. Automation, detection, and response to events and threats without human intervention, as the name suggests. It includes updating the response as the event progresses and changes. Last but not the least, response, embedded methodic, methodical processes to respond and provide remediation of events and threats. Uh, before we start with playbooks, let's quickly look at the SOAR platform audio. This is a platform layout. As you can see, uh, this is a screen grab of the uh, SOAR platform consisting of authentication, email infrastructure, threat services, orchestration, and SOAR platform in the center. The authentication block shows the identity provider mechanisms. You can see there is LDAP and IAM provided. The email infrastructure block shows the mechanisms to create incidents by email. In addition to IMAP, Exchange and OAuth are also supported. The SMTP outbound notification is the mechanism to email users when specific events occur, which we had seen in a couple of sessions before. The Threat Services block shows the mechanism to check data, such as file name, MAC addresses, suspicious URL, with various cyber threat sources. The Orchestration block shows an example of the interaction with other programs. AppHost is a separately installable software, which we looked at in detail in our last session, that allows the SOAR platform to communicate with apps, which are typically used to communicate with other systems. These apps allow other security programs to generate incidents from email, SIEMs like Curida or Splunk, ticketing systems, or other sources. They also include artifacts such as IP addresses, file hashes, URLs, username, and system names. Now let's understand uh, some things about Playbook. So Soul Platform contains various Playbooks that you, that you design. The Playbook runs when the conditions that you define are met. What's a condition? It's a change to an instance of the object type that you've selected in the playbook. Now, when a condition is met, you specify the activities that you wish to run. An activity could be hey, you want to run a script, you wish to start a function, uh, you want to add a task, add or update a data in the field, or you can provide data to the next step in the playbook to determine the progress. Now, this also includes customization, which is a tool within the playbook toolkit that can act upon, supplement, or contain data. What does this offer? It includes functions, message destination, tasks, notes, artifacts, and scripts. Now, you can use a playbook to primarily define the response to incoming and changing events. There are two methods to organize your customizations into playbook. One is the playbook designer and the other these rules and flows, workflows, formally referred to as dynamic playbooks. I'll just quickly uh, get into each of these. Playbook uh, uh, rules and workflows, formerly known as dynamic playbooks, you can use these rules to define the conditions to trigger the playbook and subsequent activities. 
workflows are graphically designed set of activities. We'll be looking at that as well in our uh, demo. Playbook Designer, Designer, on the other hand, it's a graphic based tool that you use to define the conditions to trigger the playbook and organize various customizations into comprehensive set of actions. Now, ideally, you design your playbook with a playbook designer whenever possible, and you use rules and workflows to address use cases that are not supported by the playbook designer. You can build multiple playbooks, and you can use one playbook and trigger another playbook as well. Uh, incidents and objects, uh, the simplest definition of an incident is an event in which data or system might be compromised. An object represents, represents a type of data. The object type specifies which type of data to act on. Now, an incident is considered an object and it has following child objects, which we have seen in, in our earlier sessions at the start. Uh, we have tasks, note, attachment, artifacts, milestone, data table, email message. All of these aspects were discussed in detail during our uh, sessions on incidents. Now, use cases. What do I mean by that? There are some basic use cases within a SOAR environment that's available when you're uh, uh, using this section. First is monitoring and escalation. What do I mean by that? When a significant event occurs, applications that connect to the SOAR platform to escalate incidents from email, SIMs, ticketing systems, and other resources. They include artifacts such as IP addresses, file hashes, URLs, as we know. Now, if you wish to look at uh, monitoring and escalation, if you want to have a feel of how does this, how, what, what, what is this use case about, then there are certain apps. Uh, there is SOAR Curar integration app. There is a SOAR integration for Splunk. Both of these apps are good examples of monitoring and escalation. You can check this out on our IBM Exchange Hub. Next is identification and enrichment. Now, automatic threat intelligence lookups, playbooks, or workflows, and menu-driven actions, they deliver valuable context, they reduce time to identify scope and impact, and they enable a rapid, decisive response. You can include a configuration management database, commonly known as CMDB, and directory information to help your analyst make accurate assessment of the severity and impact. Third one is containment, response, and recovery. What's this use case? This is based on trigger conditions or based on manual actions. The SOAR platform can send notifications or it can initiate external activities to contain, adjust your security posture as a part of your response playbook. Now, uh, there's an Ansible for Resilient app that's available on the Exchange Hub, which is a very good example of this type. And the last one is communication and coordination. Now, by integrating beyond the SOC, users can coordinate a fast and effective incident resolution from the SOAR platform. You can integrate bidirectionally with the ticketing and the service management. You have smart notifications, communication platforms, and other business applications. Email, uh, if, which we have discussed in the last session, it's a very good example of communication and coordination aspect. Now, before you start creating your playbook, you need a plan and an approach. Now, we have a step-by-step -step playbook design process. Creating a playbook involves a set of incident types, phases, tasks, fields, etc. Before you create a playbook, you need to understand your organization's policies for responding to incoming events. Now, organizations typically follow a predefined method and standard when they deal with incidents, whether it to be an emphasis on tools and automation, reporting and metrics, or information sharing. Now, some of the uh, industry standards that we have are NIST, Verizon, and Department of Defense. The respective links are available on the slides. You can uh, check those out in detail. Now, IBM Security recommends the following approach when you design a playbook. You need to categorize your events. You can use the incident type feature for that. You need to map your response progression. Phases is a feature that's available. You can define your manual intervention. You can use a task. You can design the look and feel, including how 
choose to organize your data. There is incident layout fields. If you remember, Prabir had discussed about incident layout in one of the sessions. You can define your decision making process. There is playbooks and script features that's available for that. Automate your information gathering. You can use thread services and functions. And at the end, once you follow all these steps, you can test your playbook. And if you don't have a working model available, you can very well use the simulation feature. Now, what about environments which have MSSP add on? As we know, uh, so for MSSP add on is a feature that you can use to manage multiple SOAR child organizations from a single configuration organization. We had discussed about this in detail in our previous session where we had a block diagram about it. Now, is creating playbook in a normal environment same as creating in an MSSP environment? Not exactly. Now, in that case, while creating playbooks in an environment with MSSP add on, what are the considerations that you need to take care of? Now, let's have a look at them. Now, with the MSSP add on, you can create playbooks, rules, and workflows, which is then pushed to every child organization. Now, remember, when you create a playbook, you got to be careful to not use name or any information that you cannot share with every child log. All the playbooks are pushed to the child logs. And when you create rules and workflows based playbook, you need to design a global playbook that meets your service requirements. Then you can add any rule workflow or scripts that meet your customer specific environment because here we are discussing about the MSSP environment. Now that we've looked at planning and approach for creating a playbook, you will need some tools to create and build your playbook, right? Now the playbook toolkit consists of customizations, objects, and other tools that will help you build your playbooks, which will meet your SOAR requirements. Like you can see on the screen, there is playbook designer, rules, phases, simulations, workspace, SOAR apps, there is incident types, scripts, layouts, and fields, tasks, and instructions. Uh, pretty soon in our demo, we'll be looking at each of this. Now the playbook designer is the next step in the evolution of playbook design. You can graphically design your conditions. Now, primarily, the playbook designer consists of a library to access your customizations such as tasks, functions, and scripts. There's canvas and graphic tools with a flowchart capability for designing your playbooks. This is a very interesting part, which we'll be looking at as well. Panels for each node and decision point that provide information and ability to customize the nodes. Time for demo. Let's look at the playbook and all the major tools that we have discussed so far. I'll switch quickly to our SOAR platform. So this is our homepage, as you can see. And I will just quickly zoom this for your viewing. I hope this should be good. Now I'll quickly click on playbooks. So once you click on playbooks for all those who are new to this environment and they have no playbooks that are configured or created, you will see all these values to be zero and you will not see any information here. You can see create playbook option. You click on that playbook. You can give the name. API name will pop up a quick small description about the playbook. What is this intended for? So uh, I just randomly created a name. I just typed in a few characters here and it was created by me, so I'll just click on that. So this is what you see the first time. And uh, you know, this is a playbook which is blank. I haven't created anything here. We'll be looking at that in detail later. So uh, let's quickly look on the right side of the screen. So there's activation, activation details here. So activation type, I have two options here, automatic and manual. What do you mean by that? Do I want to trigger this playbook automatically or do you want to set it to manual? either of the options that you choose. Uh, let's say I'm choosing manual. I get to choose what is the trigger point? What is the object type that I wish to use? Do I want to use a milestone? Do I want to use an incident? Is there an artifact? Uh, I'll probably just zoom out this. Yeah, and th there's an option for attachment as well. Okay. There's activation form. Do you want to create a form for this? There are conditions. And do you want to cancel this? So these are the set of options that you see when you open up a playbook. There's an option to click save when, as and when you perform a change. And on the left side, I'll just close this out for you. 
on the left side you can see there's a search option what does this help with okay so let's say i wanted something related to intrusion okay so intrusion what option do i have under tasks i have eight options analyze application data for signs of intrusion i can select this anything related to intrusion i have all these options here now i'll let's explore each of this menu so there are tasks, functions, scripts, sub playbooks, decision points, all the tools that we discussed in the playbook toolkit, it's all available. You click on tasks, you can see all these options here. Uh, let's say respond, contact your ISP. Now, how do I make users? What does this mean, add to canvas? Do you see this option? There is an add to canvas option. How do I make use of this? What, what do you mean by add to canvas? We'll come to that. Now I'll close this out. We'll look at functions. Right now we do not have a functions. This will require an app. Scripts. Since we haven't created any scripts so far, so all of this are showing zero. Sub playbooks. If you remember, we discussed about this a few minutes ago that can create a sub playbook here. You get an option to create a sub playbook here. And last but not the least, decision point. Very important aspect. Condition point, wait point, and end point. What do they really mean? If you do not know, just click on that. You can see there's a quick summary about it. What does it mean that a condition point evaluates data using Boolean operators to determine the outgoing path? Similarly, wait point and end point. So all the tool kits that we discussed so far are available here, okay? You wish to zoom in and zoom out. You have those options here and I'll just close this one out as well. If you can see, there is the status. It shows as draft. Now, why am I highlighting this? Why am I specifying or emphasizing on draft? What happens when this draft word goes off from this playbook? What changes? What is that I cannot do if it is not in draft state? How do I use tasks? When it says add to canvas, what happens? All of this now we'll look into detail and we'll see how to create a small playbook and get it to run. 